Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a Premier League presentation. We're going to be bringing you guys a game between Quantic and Fnatic here. This is the Aegis Cup. This is the final cup of Season 5 prior to the playoff Premier Cup. Uh, so we're going to see these teams in action here, specifically the eyes on Fnatic. If they can take this game away, they are going to be moving up to a, securing a, a slot in the Premier Cup if they can get a really, really good placement in this tournament as a whole. But the competition's tight, and they definitely need to get some points out of this one here. Meanwhile, Quantic, I think they're just shy of it, sitting at, uh, I think, 72 points. Even if they win this one, they're still not going to be able to make it out. But uh, either way, both trying to show what they've got. We'll see exactly what that we, they have in store for us coming up in just a few minutes here. Thank you guys so much for tuning on in. I'm myself, M. Blaze, and here is Triumph of Man. Once again, how's it going? Oh man, I'm feeling good tonight. This, like you said, this is going to be a really big night. Um, Fnatic, Mouse Sports, and Virtus Pro are all vying for that third and fourth spot, and all of any of them could be knocked out at any point. Uh, EG are pretty much locked in. Same for Alliance. Alliance are completely locked in. EG, if the stars align, they could actually get forced out. Possibly, I think it is. It is there. They could definitely get knocked out. If Fnatic win, if Fnatic or Mouse Sports win, and then the other one takes second place. <clears throat> Actually no, I think actually no, I think EG are fine. Actually, can yeah. think of it? Yeah, no, I was like, looking at that. And... It was last week. Mm -hmm. They can't get knocked out. But they, the thing is though, they want to stay away from fourth spot. Like, everybody wants to stay away from fourth spot because that means if you get fourth spot, you end up against Alliance in the playoffs first mm -hmm. up, and you don't want that. Yeah, you really don't want that. But let's talk about this game. So far, the uh, the drafts we've got Lone Droid Band, Darkseer Band. So we won't be seeing any Trixie on the Darkseer, and we also have the Wisping Band. No surprise mm -hmm. at all. And actually, the Naga Siren being knocked out against Quantic as well. And I mean, Quantic are a team who are, I'm actually surprised. Like they're leaving Tree in there. Yeah, they're leaving Tree yeah. out. They're leaving Our World Devourer. I mean, a lot of different stuff. I mean, Fnatic has shown that they're able to counter the OD no problem <clears> once <throat> they do have the Wisp in their hands or something that can synergize well with CK in the mid. But uh, either way, they're showing that they're not afraid of that. But the Naga Siren, as opposed to a Tree Out Band does surprise me a little bit here, so things are changing up a bit. Well, she is a lethal, like, when used as a support, she's still incredibly lethal, and the way she can set up basically a, she, her ult, the Song of the Siren, pretty much allows you to set up a perfect storm of uh, nuclear firepower. You can drop those huge, like, wombo combos with stuff like vacuum, wall, all sorts of really, really nasty spells like that. I am waiting to see, like, Fnatic are a team, this is, this is why a lot of people are, because they will try all sorts of really weird and unpredictable stuff. That said, mm -hmm. they have opened with Visage and Lifestealer, which is not weird or unpredictable at all. But they're a team who will quite happily pick up a hand grenade and then bat it at you. <laughs> and one way or another, it's going to make a spectacular mess. But in this case, we're going to have Quantic Gaming grab up the Trent Protector, which I almost... <clears throat> it really depends what Fnatic decides to stick in that mid. But if they go for the OD next, this could really get quite brutal very quickly, because yeah. OD is... A pain he has to deal with in most uh, most of the time, but if you then let him have the tree and protect to back him up, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They might be going for an offensive trilane because I mean, if we've got the tree there, that does make the trilane weak. Yeah, that's very very true. Their their lanes aren't going to be the strongest no matter what, but a uh, good thing for Fnatic is they do have a couple bands, so they're going to start out with taking out the OD immediately. That's a no brainer right there, like you're saying. It's just one lane that they cannot afford to lose as heavily as it would with uh, just the power of OD's last hitting potential with the living armor sustaining him. So definitely something they need to take off the board there. Now they have a little bit more potential for Hani to make his mark on the map. But uh, one thing that's interesting about Fnatic's draft so far, uh, picking up the life stealer early on not only secures it for Era. As as his, one of his signature carry heroes. But along with that, it forces uh, Quantic to counter draft against it. They're going to go Flame and Lasso Overgrowth, this both can pierce through Rage, and it's going to be trying to define it so that Lifestealer isn't hitting like a truck like he will be if they don't do something about it. But on at the same time, when they're drafting out the Lifesteal and the Visage so early on, it also means they're limiting their mobility. Fnatic loves to branch out, control the lanes very effectively, and that may not be as available to them with these two heroes because they don't really have as much global presence. Of course, TPs, race car build, anything could happen. But for right now, they seem to be uh, kind of rooting their feet in place a little bit. Well, I think it's very smart they banned at the OD just coming up there. I mean, Lifestealer and Visage, not really mobile early on, but once you get that... See, the Lifestealer does, isn't mobile on his own, but he's one of those heroes who benefits from those high mobility heroes. So he sticks up like a Storm, a Puck, a Queen mm -hmm. of Pain in the mid, and suddenly Lifestealer has got a complete... Like, he's got the smorgasbord board of options. They're on a Nature's Prophet. He can be anywhere when you want him. But as it is, why, and I think this is particularly why, not only because OD, like you want to ban at the OD, obviously, because he's just obnoxious, plain and simple, but those high mobility heroes... They're all intelligent solo mids, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. So you can't get the Storm in mid, you can't get the Queen of Pain mid if you've got OD on the board. So banning him out makes a ton of sense there. 
That said, like you said, the race car build, I mean, it works fine on its own, but he definitely hits it stride of all of his own when he has somebody to basically deliver him to the fight. And that's why stuff like Puck is so damn popular. And I would not be surprised if we see something like Puck or Queen of Pain being picked up fairly shortly on to one up in the mid. But they're picking up a gyrocopter hmm. as well. This is very greedy. This is definitely very greedy. And this, I mean... We could see like stuff like the gyro support gyrocopter is sort of an older build that isn't yeah. used anymore. But I get the feeling this will be a safe lane gyrocopter, and this kind of tips their hand towards going for an offensive tri lane with the Nakes. Absolutely, gyrocopter safe lane, offensive tri lane with a life stealer, and then something a high impact hero in solo mid. Yeah, definitely searching for that try versus try. They know that. Early on, before Lasso, Batrider isn't that threatening for gank potential, and uh, the Treant Protector is not great at all in lane. He has heavy right-click, but when he can't kind of trade back and forth, close the distance there, he's just going to be kind of sitting back on his laurels, and that's going to be the opportunity for Fnatic to go on in. Life Stealer Visage, two great heroes in a try versus try. And even the Bane, uh, he'll be good to set kind of single somebody out with the Nightmare and try to make it a three versus two, but all in all, still very mana-reliant. And if they go with something like maybe a Keeper of the Light to reinforce their lane on Fnatic's end, they will still be in a great spot in that tri lane. But either way, that Gyrocopter is going to be guaranteeing some nice farm uh, in the safe lane there, and I expect a lot out of him once he hits the mid game. But kind of just stay in a one versus one circumstance down on bottom will be fine and dandy for him there. Uh, the question is the mid. I mean, of course, they could run the Gyro mid, they could run the Gyro as a support, a lot of different options, but. Most likely a safe lane gyrocopter, and with that, Hani's probably going to go for something like you said with more mobility, something like a Puck, something like a Queen of Pain, where they can kind of jump around a little bit. And uh, in that sense, I'm not sure which one is least, uh, I'm trying to think of a better phrase than, uh, least limited in the sense that Batrider and Bane and Trium Protector do counter both those heroes decently if they do want to commit an ultimate or two to them. I'm just going to point out, some people are freaking out at the... Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. One second. My microphone has switched over to my camera for no apparent reason. I'm oh. just going to fix that. All right. I will just restart Dota quickly, and I'll jump back in. I just sure. want to point out for the people who are freaking out about Kirigaya on Quantic side, that's actually Funzy, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. So no stand-ins for either team. But I will be back in just one second. This should fix it. Yep. So yeah, that is definitely Funzy, and they are playing full strength on both lineups here, so it's not... And nobody's rares are at the disposal of the stand-in war, but we do see that with this full strength lineup, they're going to be looking at a, a different way of playing. They're going to be looking at a kind of synergizing together, coordinating very, very well. I love the Rubik pickup here. It's not something that I necessarily expected, but I can see it working wonders. Uh, of course, you start off really well in the Tri vs. Tri because he has the range of initiation that a lot of heroes lack. You guarantee that Telekinesis, if they're anywhere nearby, and uh, he has very, very quick cast, so suddenly you're lifting somebody up and canceling out the Bane's ultimate, or you can steal it for yourself and throw it the other direction. You have all these different tools that you pick up very, very quickly, and in Fly's hands, that hero works wonders. So that'll be really interesting to see. Of course, uh, this is going to be picked up by No-Tail. He's kind of the micro wonder boy there, but yeah, it's going to be a very, very strong complement of heroes going up on the top lane. Quantic will, however, pick up the Queen of Pain to give themselves a little bit of that extra oomph. Treant, Bat, Bane, all great heroes to set up kills, but not necessarily deliver. That's where the Queen of Pain comes in to drop down the Sonic Wave Scream and actually add that damage that they need to bring somebody down. Okay, I'm back. It should be working in game. I just want to tell everybody to turn me off. I'll turn the broadcast off and then back on again. They should be able to hear me properly now. It's not using my camera anymore, so Good. I've actually got the blue snowball working. Cool, cool. So yeah, if you guys didn't hear that, uh, those in Dota TV, if you're not hearing Triumph right now, go ahead and turn the audio on, channel on and off and then on, and uh, you should be able to hear both of us no problem at all. So, uh, final band's coming on out. I'm curious to see what they're trying to take out. Quantic has kind of got a d diversified lineup where if they wanted to run like the tr the Triant solo, they could, but most likely they're going to run the Bats uh, solo bot lane against the Gyro. So, the real question is the carry. Interestingly enough, Fnatic thinks that Razor would have been a rather threatening carry. It's definitely good against Lifestealer. And uh, in that regard, they do take it off the board themselves. I think it's a very smart ban. Not only is it good against Lifestealer, it really screws him over and completely nullifies his damage output in the tri lane, but also the fact is you can Nightmare along with the Bane's sleep. So you send someone to sleep, take him out of the fight, and then just steal all the damage. So you use it on Lifestealer. It's a complete and utter pain in the butt. On top of that, uh, obviously Razor benefits from being tanky, and Tramp Predictor beats that bill extremely well. So I think it's a very solid ban for them. And in fact, something I've actually seen, 
I think it was the AMD Premier League, I was actually seeing a Razer go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an OD solo mid. Oddly enough, it actually worked fairly well. Obviously, the teens weren't that high profile, but it was working pretty well, and the Razers still came out ahead hmm. in CS, despite getting ganked twice in mid by a Chen. Wow. So that, that is pretty... I think uh, Razers, you know, a potential sleeper 1v1 solo mid against OD, just from watching that. But, I mean, I need to see it a bit more yeah. often with a few higher profile teams. But I think it's got some potential, and I want to see it a bit more. But that said... That said, the final pick here for Fnatic looks like they're just waiting on their solo mid. I mean, Puck works really well against either any of these heroes. Bunch his silence is just an absolute. Yeah, his silence would be absolutely fantastic. Oh no, he's banned out. Shh. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention there, but yeah, no, he's out. So I mean, that leaves. Well, hmm. your Queen of Pain's out. Um, she's taken Puck. I mean, one of the other choices is obviously something like Storm Spirit. Works very well in yeah. the solo mid role. A little vulnerable to Queen of Pain harass in a one v one setting, but if you bottle crow a bit, then he should be just fine. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what they go for. I mean, he's a possible. Maybe they'll just go, maybe they would just want to get aggressive and say, you know what, screw it. Let's just get something like a DK throw that mid. But the problem is, I think they want something that can gank as soon as it hits level six, preferably earlier. Huh. Yeah, there we go. An alchemist. Cool. That is an interesting choice. It can definitely gank. But the thing is, with the offensive trials, if they fail, they need backup and they need it fast. You need to have other options. Somebody who can help get things rolling in the right direction mm -hmm. straight away. Alchemist can uh, so. He doesn't have the same, you know, I'm just going to jump out of nowhere and destroy your entire trine like Queen of Pain or Puck does, but at the same time, if he teleports up there, he can quite quickly swing everything out of whack. If he just teleports yeah. up there and they set up a fight for him with Rubik's Lift. Mm -hmm. So that is always a possibility. <clears throat> that said, this could potentially be, if Fnatic are going to do something crazy, they could just abandon the top lane, put Gyrocopter or Alchemist mid, and then defensive tri lane while Lifestealer takes the jungle. If they want to go really super greedy, mm -hmm. that is possible for them. If they're worried about not winning the lanes, they could do that. It's yeah. my... <clears throat> Excuse me, Jesus. I'm still a bit ill, but there we are. Uh, in that setup there, I kind of feel like their two choices were the Alchemist or the Beastmaster. Hani loves his Beastmaster, and it kind of fits the same bill as Alchemist. But it kind of shows that they want to be a little bit more aggressive earlier. If they want to go for like a level 4 or 5... Uh, TP with the concoction charging up has a lot of potential there. So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the Alchemist will definitely fit the bill. It guarantees in the late game 100%. There's no way they can be out carried by a freaking Marana when they have a Gyrocopter, Lifesteal, and Alchemist. So they kind of shift their mindset. They want to stack up their Ancients, turtle it up, farm up, and kind of really just hit the creeps. And uh, we'll see if they get the opportunity to do that or if Quantic puts the pressure on, as they do have a rather formidable uh, lineup to set things up. The Nightmare into Arrow is going to have a lot of yeah. kill potential, and then they can follow through with some great pushing from Triant and uh, I guess even the wave clearing of Queen of Pain. So they will probably kind of go for 5 man Dota as soon as the Bat Rider hits his blink, even pro possibly even beforehand. But uh, yeah, they're going to have to put the pressure on because Fnatic definitely has the, the late game in their hands. Yeah, this is definitely going to be weird. Ah, oh, man, Marana again. I mean, we've been seeing some crazy. If you cap, if you, I'm pretty sure it was the Alliance versus Kaipi, but there was some amazing. Um, I hear there was some absolutely amazing Marana plays in that. But that said, I think she's definitely a hero that could definitely do with some buffs right about here. Particularly, I mean, her Star Storm. It's the cast time on that is ridiculous. Not so much the cast time, but the delay in damage is just mm. so huge. It's not funny. It needs. I really feel like they need to give it the Phantom Blades treatment, make it like Queen of Pain's nuke, and cause it to basically have a zero cast point. Sure. That would really go a long way to helping Murano just sort of stay viable. Like because of the low levels of Star Storm, it's you can be denied. Like is that obnoxious? A melee, <clears throat> excuse me, a melee hero with a hatchet can deny you while you're trying to CS with Star Storm. It's utterly obnoxious. So, but regardless, I mean, I hate on Murano a lot. She's a good hero and definitely very scary. And I think they may actually. It looks like Fnatic might have changed up their mind. They may actually be going for, like you said, go for this defense try and say, screw it, we've got a better late game than you, let's just go mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, it definitely would work for their mindset. I'm just worried about anybody that goes on the offlane, unless they decide to jungle the Nakes, which is definitely possible, I don't see it working. So I think they're sw they are going to be going for the aggressive try, but they're taking their time to rotate around and try to control their jungle a little bit here. It looks like it's going to be Era on the life slower down the solo bottom, up against Silence, Queen of Pain. That'll be interesting to see, but we are going to be seeing this aggressive trial and this time around with the gyrocopter intact, so a lot of damage potential with the flat cannon, and uh, of course he will be able to get in the fight very early on with that rocket barrage, so interesting decision to switch that out. I, I do like the rage against Arrow, but if the nightmare lands, there's only so much you can do against it. You have to wake him up and perfectly time the rage, and they might not have the coordination or, or the timing to do that, so I guess Trixie is a good alternative sending him up here on the gyrocopter, but... Uh, I'm also seeing another transition. Uh, no, yeah, they're sending Era mid. They're going to run the Lifestealer mid against the Batrider. 
and uh, then set up the Alchemist to go up against the Queen of Pain. I think either way, this is going to have rough of the same effect. That said, um, that said, uh, the Alchemist would have had the stronger mid just because it's a lot easier for him to zone. With oh wow, actually no, looks like they're just going to do it. I thought that was being a Rubik lift over here, but it's not at the top end. It's going to do a little bit of a ward war, and wow, Fnatic just edged that one out there. A lot of uphill misses for Quantic there. However, they also got a D ward down here as well. I noticed that one happened a little bit earlier. But that said, it is easier for Alchemist to zone in the mid just because he can cover a lot more of the real estate with his acid spray, and it's it's fairly vexing. But here, here like Quita Pain, it does hurt quite a bit, especially if she tries to harass it under like the negative armor effects. She actually, she actually takes a lot of damage from the creep, so it's very difficult for her to get in there and just A-click harass the Alchemist if she takes that mid. So I don't mind that transition. I think they may have been caught out a little bit. I don't know if Fnatic were really expecting the Queen of Pain to safely. I honestly feel like they were expecting Funzi here to be taking that jungle role. Taking that, or uh, the Batrider end up in the jungle. But that said, look at the stacks right now. Mid lane, although we might be seeing a bit of an engagement on top there. Soksha has recovered from his broken hand, it seems. will be forced to back off there. I'm a little bit worried about this top lane, to be honest, Blaze, for Quantic, just because Bane doesn't have huge damage output initially. He needs a few levels to get rolling. Obviously, Tree has pretty much nothing at all, so they're almost completely reliant on Mirana's ability to land damage, and she's gone for the early level there in the leap, which is really going to limit the amount she can do with Starstorm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be prioritizing arrow more, uh, the arrow ability more than anything else. We're actually going to see it switched up here. Fly is going to be the target of choice. They're going to drop it on him, and might be able to get a first blood out of this. Despite their lack of damage, the last right click will come on through right before the telekinesis stun, and that is going to be first blood going the way fucking mad, and even another one. Nice a little bit of body block. After the leap, Sox is going to set up another kill for, again, fucking Matt. So Bane is setting himself up 800 gold in two minutes' time. That's luxury for his support right there. So although they didn't really have as much damage, the aggressive positioning of the Gyrocopter there, Gyrocopter committed his Flakin and Rocket Barrage to that settle, a little bit of creeps that was being pulled off by Quantic, and in doing so, they committed themselves to a position they weren't really ready for. So as soon as the... I believe it was the Visage was slept, and then he was woken up by Fly. Sox transitioned over and just arrowed the Rubik who had awoken him, and that set them up for a very, very good engagement. And the other thing is, they're also they're tanking a wave of creep there as well. I mean, that was pretty much that was a large part of the tipping point there. The fact they're tanking a full range of a wave of creep and already committed their spells, so they had no damage. Like sure. Quantic doesn't have a huge amount of damage to kick back with, but then when you've already, like you said, you've already committed most of your damage. Because the thing is, Fnatic, they've got a lot of damage, but it's all tied up in Trixie's skills. So if he's already burnt both his cooldowns, he's got nothing to offer, and suddenly you've got absolutely nothing. And you're actually, I mean, right there and then. Sure, they don't have a lot of damage, unless it's Tree. And he was in the perfect position, like nobody was really wor worried about the tree, and then suddenly, you know, a one point, one and a half second stun is actually kind of painful when there's a tree and a full wave of creep there just hitting you. Mm -hmm. There's just not much Rubik can do about that with his one armor. He just falls to that very, very quickly. So unfortunately, for Fnatic, Quanti get off to a quick start here. Those two kills, we're just going to wait for who's... Looks like... Fucking man has DC, so he'll be back shortly. But we should probably keep an eye on the bottom lane because, of course, you know, it's a good start there for Quantic, but Morana does not scale that well in the late game, so it's really going to come down to this life. I mean, look at this. This is so gritty. Life still Alchemist and Gyrogram. I mean, even if Gyrogram doesn't get a ton of farm, if this Alchemist and life still to get out of control, it's going to be so hard for Morana to stop them. They do have Queen of Pain, who's definitely viable in the late game, provided she gets a lot of early items. If she gets Sheepstick into BKB, into Monkey King, but we've seen her go toe-to-toe -to -toe with even the heaviest late game carries. So there is always that potential, but still, I do think this will be quite rough for them, especially if we see Alchemist pick up stuff like a Bash. Like, Morana and Queen of Pain, they have to stay away. They do not like getting close to their opponents. So if we see massive lockdown, like Bashes coming out of Lifestealer and Alchemist, I think it's going to be very difficult for them to keep the distance, even with the help of something like Bane. Yeah. So... This is going to be an interesting setup here. Obviously, the solo mid bottom is going to go really, really well. Or, or well, the solo bottom, Queen of Pain is going to have a really, really good time against the Alchemist early on. And, uh, of course, Lifestyle is not going to be able to find as much farm until he gets at least the phase boots. But, in, in general, if they can really make it so that Quantic is controlling the top lane, then they will be guaranteeing that they're going to be able to push at the time that they need to. If they're kind of just falling back and having to hide underneath their tower, Fnatic are going to have a rough time of things. Right now, their, their levels, especially someone to examine Visage, is great in try versus try, but No Tail went Grave Chill first, and he's been only got an 88 experience out of his level 1, so that means until he meets a couple of creep waves up on the top lane, he's not actually going to be able to put out that pressure that he wants, and we're actually going to see this transition down bottom instead. 
Yeah, this is. I mean, this was a really weird option. For, like, I don't think they planned for the mid at all for the rotation of the Quantic Heroes, because look at Hanny's items. He opened, like, he's just got the boots. He opened up with three branches and a set of tangos. That's a, that's a bottle rush mid. That's mm -hmm. definitely not planned. Like, they did not plan to have him rotate there at all when they drafted this, nor even when he bought the items. I honestly feel like they should have kept Arrow bottom. They should have just let Hanny get mid, because he could have dealt with a Batrider. You take that mid lane with the Acid Spray, you can zone that out, you can look after yourself there, and you can fight back. If Sure, Batrider can stack up a lot of spam, but if he's constantly walking into that Acid Spray, you can deal a lot of damage back, especially with Concoction. If he goes in and starts attacking, you get some creep aggro on him, and then you slap him with a stun, he is in a lot of trouble there. And you could have, I think they just could have had the Alchemist spiral out of control and caught up with Error. I mean, Error can catch up. Lifesteal, if he gets, if he just sort of gets some recovery minus at 10, 12 minutes, he can get a fair amount of farm out of the jungle. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like they could have, should have gone for that. But that said, it looks like Fnatic are going to adjust. They're just going to, this is something that happens to Trixie a lot. He gets a really weird hero. Like we've seen him just up like Tidehunter off lane and just go, all right, well, screw it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it solo. And he's going to be able to manage that, and they're just going to make sure they get Hanny farmed, and that should work out for them in the end there. Because like we've mentioned, Mirana does not scale that well in the late. Of course, she should. I mean, you look at this right now. You look at these CS, she's still losing mm -hmm. in CS to Trixie. That's how bad her freaking last hitting abilities is. Yeah, she doesn't really have near the right click potential she needs, and also there's no real support participation in the lane. The Triant is so low, Goblack is trying to handle the Wild Wings, and right now can barely manage that, so he is going to be able to fall back there, but the big thing is they cannot go for pulls, because they already committed all their sentry wards, so yeah, Goblack, or so fucking mad, could pick that up since he got so much gold on the Bane, but since he's opted for Boots and Magic Stick and Roaming Bottom, there is no opportunity for them to null to eliminate that sentry ward. However, we are going to see engagement down at bottom. Already a lot of damage heading in on the Rubik, but there's going to be a stun coming out from the concoction. They're going to drop down a pretty heavy soul assumption, but of course it's going to be healed up by the Triant, and there will be the Bane walking away once more. Yeah, Triama gets popped. You're not killing anybody. Sorry. You thought you were going to have some fun, but it looks like Goblack is just going to go back. He's out of mana, out of health, needs to go back and heal up. This is going to give... This is unfortunate, the fact that they're pulling all these resources away, because I don't think, like, this single hero roaming to the bottom lane isn't going to zone out Hanny all that effectively, I don't feel, once they start putting these supports back in again, although it looks like they're just going for the pull at the moment. And now the fact that Visage has Soul Assumption too, they can afford to trade some hits and knock out some really, really nasty hits, because you look at this, Alchemist has three levels there in Concoction. That stun is really going to hurt. Tree Armor or no Tree Armor, that is going to definitely sting if it lands. And you see, like, still, Mirana. Struggling to keep up there with the Triant and the fact that he's just not being able to do that. And then we go, just going to cause a bit of harass there with the Star Storm. But the Flak Cannon also doing some work. It looks like the Courier's coming out. She's going to get a bottle fairly early on. It's going to help with a bit of the spam and control. Trixie, on the other hand, I don't think he's going to go for one. That's it. We may have an engagement in the bottom lane in just a second. The Bane comes in, but it's still fairly dangerous in the go just because they could at any point have the Alchemist just rotate over and drop them with a very, very big hit. Yeah, it's, I mean, essentially, it's obviously two versus three here, and the Silent doesn't have his ultimate yet, so they really have very, very limited potential with these low HP heroes. Silent gonna try to blink away instead, gonna be stunned on up, another telekinesis comes out through. I don't think they have enough damage, definitely not with the living armor, and in fact, it's a bait, turning around on to bring down Fly, looking for more on No Tail, hasn't Grave Chilled just yet, gonna head for the hills, but too many right clicks goes on through, and Silent is gonna get a double. Hani trying to pop off his stun, he does get the stun off, but that ultimate comes on through once more, and Silent will get a triple. I mean, just they walk right into it. A level 2 Rubik trying to commit to that fight. They start off the stun and once they committed their cooldowns, once they didn't have that concoction available, Queen of Pain was free to do whatever she wanted. Shadow Strike, Scream, right click away. And it's just easy kills handing right into her hands. Something they didn't really count on the fact that Bane has a lot, the supports on Quantic have a lot more levels than them right now. So <clears throat> Bane was able to just do a ton of damage. And the focus in the fight on the Rubik there, unfortunately, just got clobbered. Absolutely clobbered by that pure damage nuke. And Queen of Pain, though, picking up her ult in the middle of that, very, very effective for her. Looks like she is going to roam towards the mid, potentially. And now Trixie, wow, has actually decided, you know what, I'm just going to jungle. He's going to be a free oh. kill here. Things just go from bad to worse for Fnatic. And this is definitely not what they want, because this is a money match, but they need to win this. Quantic, on the other hand, they're just playing for pride, but still, this is not going well for Fnatic at all. Now, Arrow possibly about to get ganked here. They've got Lasso up as well. Potentially going to drag him up onto the high ground on the dire side. In fact, no, just going to bait him back and forth, do some damage there. He does have support on the way. Mm -hmm. Fly is there. 
Yeah, big full stack magic stick does keep error up, and he did also have no tail waiting the wings. But yeah, in this position here, they really, really need to be playing more cautiously. They're gonna go in here onto Bat Rider. Will commit the flame break to force back no tail, but he's taking so much damage. He's gonna try to pop off the lasso, but might die anyways with his telekinesis. Living armor not enough to keep him up, and the right click is there. They do bring him down in the end. Yeah. That is going to be a very, very solid three versus one movement. Started off, uh, the bat rider felt very confident in his position, but open wounds being at a second rank, and most importantly, the, the fact that no tail didn't get forced back very far from that flame break allowed him to stay and get that soul assumption off, and yeah, that dropped it down. So maybe that switch over. There was a bug fix recently of the flame break and his knockback potential, and uh, that was about half the knockback potential. So definitely played into that a little bit. And beyond that, the top, lasso came out really late. Lane. Trixie taking a lot of damage here. Soksha forces him back. It looks like they are going to cause a significant amount of damage on this tower in a second. I don't really know about Trixie coming forward. Like, he's got to be careful, but Marana still has leap up. She leaps and gets a point blank arrow. He is dead. In fact, he might even just die to a leap here. No, decides not to dive under the tower. I think that was probably the wisest choice there, as he could have potentially knocked out a quick amount of damage here with the rocket barrage. Still only level 5, though. Doesn't have cooldown just yet. As it looks like we've got another engagement there in mid. Looks like Bunzi in some trouble. The open wood's about to wear off, though. Misses entirely with the flame break there. And now we've got Miller though Tyler jumps in there, gonna go on top of Fly. Fly gets brought down. She doesn't have mana for ult though, and does not have a bottle at the moment, so no way to just mana her up quickly. As it looks like Era should be able to walk away from this alive. Even so, just the, the rotation there, Silent immediately TPing on in when Batrider was under pressure and picking up a pretty easy kill. This is so far been the name of the game, is uh, Fnatic going for kills they really don't have much place taking, considering the Triant armor, and then once they don't have anything else to do with their spells, they instead get turned around on pretty hardcore. So, right, it looks really, really good for Queen of Pain, and now she has not only Treads, Magic 1, and Null Tally, but most importantly, that uh, Oblivion Staff moving in towards the Orc of Malevolence. So she's going to be able to go in and just have so much gank potential, and hasn't even yet committed an ultimate, but once down on the bottom lane. So has that yet again in her disposal, and things are looking more and more difficult for Fnatic here. Definitely, as it looks like I hear a cold down. Oh, yeah. alright. Trixie just gonna use the cooldown. I mean, this is doable, it's only a 50 second cooldown there. But Trixie gonna use his cooldown and Rocket Barrage to help him farm his way through this stack. They're definitely much needed gold recovery. But I've gotta say, right now, the supports from Quantic have been doing absolutely miles of work. They have really, really been driving the pace of this game. And also the rotations. Well, now, Error now in some trouble. They need to get the lift on, funds on Quantic there. They pick up the Bane. We'll drag him back. The Error now managed to infest, gets stuck in there as it looks like the Bane sleep goes on top of Bunzi. Bunzi, though, dancing back and forth. Can't decide if he wants to commit or not. There we go. Finally decides, gets the drag. A Queen of Pain drops the ult and they will slam down Era. Era gets taken out yet again. That is definitely not a great result for Fnatic now. She's still going. Queen of Pain, silent, is not done. He's going to die for this. Jumps in, screams. Possibly another double kill coming up a second tree. I'm going to heal him up as well. That will do the difference. And they'll bring down another hero there. They do lose oh, the battle nice. in the mix though, but definitely, definitely a good result for them. In fact, they will even steal this stack of creep most likely. Oh no, she doesn't have enough for a scream just yet. Oh, they'll get it anyway. Just the auto attacks are enough. That's low enough there that they can nick it. And then we have one final scream. Yeah. Finishes it up. Queen of Pain. Sant has been driving this game right now, and he will definitely... I mean, this is exactly what they need to do. Just keep Fnatic under constant pressure. Make sure they do not have a chance to get those Tricors bombed up at all. Oh, might be a mistake for Sant, though. On the mid lane, gonna get healed up by the Treant armor. It's just enough. No-Tail gonna get right clicked down by Sox, and the blink is sufficient to get Queen of Pain out of dodge there. So, yeah, that was just a really, really good series of events for Quantic. Going in deep. Uh, they did get initiated on a, a little bit more pressure than they expected because they didn't have the high ground vision that they needed to be in that position there. But luckily, Triant's got your back. He'll set you up with a rank 3 living armor and make sure that all those troubles go away very, very quickly. So it's just kind of been back and forth, but all in favor of Quantic thus far. Only losing two lives. And uh, on top of that, the Queen of Pain is sitting at 5 0 and 4. So Silent going to be doing a lot of work here. But the interesting setup here for Queen of Pain is that item pickup. Going for the point booster over the Oblivion Staff, of course, has plenty of great stats in the Oblivion Staff itself. A lot of mana regen to play around with. But the big thing here is going to be moving in towards the Agonim Scepter rapidly. Um, yeah, the question is. I honestly think she'll still get the Hex first. She just grabbed the point boost for quick stats, like just the raw health, raw mana. Because he's seeing, like, she's been going to this fight and just emptying herself completely sure. dry. But this is, combined with Triumph, this just makes her a lot more durable, means she can get a lot more aggressive, and that's a pretty big deal. And I think delaying 
the Oblivion Staff by two minutes at tops, I think that's not a bad choice at all, just to make sure she has the ability to dive, because she, she has the ability to get aggressive, then she can truly put the pressure on. Because, of course, you know, like you said, like she almost made a mistake, that she almost went down to just get, getting turned around on by the Alchemist stun. But with the 200 extra health plus the Triama, she's going to be very, very hard to shut down. Obviously, also, the extra mana for a couple of extra blinks as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is kind of making it interesting where Silent is playing a carry Queen of Pain and then Marana is going for the semi-carry role with the uh, the treads and the drum and just making sure they can be mobile and active and exploiting the weakness of Fnatic's early game. So we do see Batrider provides plenty of vision with Firefly and an Observer Ward. They're going to go in, Moonlight Shadow up, but they couldn't blink with the Batrider. He doesn't have the dagger yet, so had to try to walk it in and Arrow was able to just scoot on out of there. Still probably going to take the tier 1 tower though, unless Fnatic moves in very, very quickly with these familiars to try to zone them out. Yeah, things are just going to go from uh, bad to worse right now, as Funzi almost has his blink dagger. It's like 50 gold, and there we go, 2 gold. He'll have it in a second. As for Marana, I honestly feel... Oh wow! No to how did he's gotten stuck there in the trees, actually gets cleaned up. How the hell did he get in there? Well, he was just trying I'm to hide out. Sure. Sox had the Invis rune and just perfectly set it up so that they could pincer him in and he couldn't go anywhere from there. So they take the tier one, they take a kill on the visage as well. But on Marana's item, I honestly feel the drums are a very necessary choice for her, especially like if she goes phase, or in this case, she's sitting on agility treads. She really, really, I feel, needs that health boost. We've seen Arrow fly out, isn't going to hit anything though, just shaves its way past fly. But yeah, I know, I feel like she needs drums. She needs, it's pretty much not so much she needs drums, but she, if she's not doing a fast BKB, which I think is honestly, it's overrated these days, it's a really, really fast BKB, and it's not a good choice for her. She needs that health boost. There's just no way to play otherwise. She's so easy to burst down. She's like, if she doesn't do it, if she sits on no health boost, if she sits on something like 700 health, 750 health at level 10, 11, and that's not a great place to be when you're up against stuff like Gyrocopter with cooldown or the big, big damage burst there from Alchemist. She'll just, if she gets hit by a max level stun, she'll just get completely and utterly wrecked before she has a chance to move. So I think that's definitely the right choice for her. Just the question is what she goes for next, because Marana, like, she's got a fairly flexible build. Whether or not she goes for Deso, I honestly feel, if she could afford to go for Deso, and that will help them push early too, the Corruption Orb will help out a lot. That said, stuff like a fast Yashiro or a Manta style is also popular. Or she might go for, I mean, we even see weird stuff, like she might even go, you know what, let me just pick up a Maelstrom just for helping out clear, clear the creep waves quickly. Damn. Uh, the big thing for Quantic now is not to let up pressure. If the even fi like 1500 gold gets uh, out on each of Fnatic's core heroes here, if Alchemist can finish off with Lothars and Nix can finish up his armlet, then it's going to be really, really bad for Quantic as there's so much tank ability and maneuverability that they didn't have before. Going to pop off the smoke here. Fnatic is going to try to roam in, possibly to get kill on Sox, but he's just going to TP down to bottom, and suddenly there's no threat whatsoever for Fnatic's movements. They're going to go in and take a lot of tier 1 pressure as Quantic kind of hides on out, popping the Moonlight Shadow, but there's nobody to be found down here, so both teams kind of trying to make something happen, but not really in the position to do so. Yeah, oh wow, this actually could transition well, though, for Quantic. They're going to roll it towards the mid lane. They won't have the Moonlight Shadow, sure, but they will have the smoke, which should get them close. There we go, they're going to move in, and I think, yeah, they've got a ward here. This spots up everything. They know exactly what's going on. This could go very, very bad for Aaron. A second. The arrow goes in, doesn't connect. The oh. Queen of Pain jumps in, gets a big ult up. Hits three heroes there. As we're going to see the rage, but it's not giving up. Tree drops his living armor as well, along with his overgrowth as well. Looks like he's going to back off there, but they already got two heroes down. Although that said, Quantic are falling very low, very quickly. The bottles are coming out. They're going to try to heal up, but still the familiars are moving. Going to try and take out Soxie there, but it's already four down. Fnatic get absolutely blasted, and Silent is on a godlike streak. Yeah, might lose it here. There. Yeah, Hondi does turn around to bring down Queen of Pain, but easy money to buy back into it, and she's going to come back on into the mid lane very quickly. That was just a perfect start for Quantic. They did waste the arrow, but Silent getting that amazing ultimate off, just hitting three heroes immediately, screaming as well. They have pull pulled out two people really, really quickly. Bane found it, one outlier with his Fiend's Grip, and then the Bat had the Blink maneuverability to pull Arrow right on out of it. So they just really destroyed them there. Of course, not losing a single hero, but the Queen of Pain at the very end of it, and uh, just obliterating Fnatic. They have to pull a rabbit out of the hat if they're going to be able to hang on to this game. Definitely. I mean, Fnatic thought they were safe there. They didn't really think that they were all seen. The thing is, see how they put this one up here? They thought they were safe because of that. They thought they had like control of this area in terms of vision. They didn't realize this lane ward was here. This set everything up. So everybody saw the heroes moving up there. And this is like kind of Fnatic. They're damned if they do, damned if they don't. They split up and stay like sort of fairly uh, segregated. 
they're going to get picked off by Bane, by the arrow, this, um, by Queen of Pain jumping and stuff. It's very easy for them to isolate and burst down any outlying heroes. On the other hand, if they group up like that, Silent drops a massive, massive bomb of nukes, and it's just, oh. what can you do? You lose three heroes like that so quickly, it's painful indeed, although it looks like it will manage to block the arrow with a rage, but it doesn't matter, arrow gets lassoed up, he can't deal any damage, they do bring down the Batrider though, now Silent has to back up there, he's trying to get away, Rocket Barrage could do a ton of damage here, as looks as Queen of Pain though, she blinks yet again, they don't have any more stuns to lock him down, and this is definitely hurting them right now, they don't have any of those on-demand stuns, they lose Vintage as well, but the Batrider is already down, doing a lot of damage though, as it looks like they will get Trixie as well with... The Fiend's Grip, he gets isolated and brought... This is what I mean. Yeah. You have heroes on their own, they get isolated, they get brought down so quickly. The Bane, the Arrow, the Queen of Pain, it's just so hard to deal with. Even the Lasso as well. It's really, really easy for Quantic to find outlying heroes and just lock them down and burst them down very, very quickly. That said, like you mentioned though, a couple of easy items that we'll get Fnatic back in this... It will be the Lothars as well as the Armlet. That said, they are at a 10k disadvantage. Quantic have done such a good game, such a good job of controlling this game. However, I think they might have. I think Queen of Pain saw that. She knows something sus is up. As it looks like Alchemist will stun himself, but he's got a friend inside him, and if they try and jump him, it could go badly. Mm -hmm. But right now, now they've got this on Roche. Yeah, they could do. Yeah, they could do the Roshan pretty easily. But this is definitely this is anything that's going to help them out. It's the Lothar's Edge. Now the fact that they've got to be careful about roaming around by themselves because they could quite easily get bursted down by an Infest Bomb there. Yeah, arrow flies out, not going to connect here, but the Roshan has fallen. The big thing there, Medallion of Courage doing his work, negating the armor, uh, and Triant just adding in some HP supplements. So they're able to bring it down. The Aegis Mortal goes to the Queen of Pain, which <laughs> has been just doing so much work thus far, has the Orchid in the bank, and uh, is going to be a terror now. That last fight, they didn't have the ultimate, they didn't have the Sonic Wave, but th that still lent them two kills and they only lost one, so even in Fnatic's best circumstances, they can't really pull away much of a win. And uh, that's really just based on how powerful Quantic's lineup is in the team fights at this stage. When uh, Alchemist has a little bit more beef to him, he's going to be scary on the front line. Uh, the fact that Arrow is maneuvering and raging out arrows is really, really good for them, but right now it's not cutting it if they can't follow through with enough damage to set up Soul Assumption after Soul Assumption. They instead just get burst down very, very quickly. Speaking of, Trixie on top lane is already dead. Yeah, no chance. So, however, they might actually get Sant as well here, who will get brought down, but uh, does have the Aegis. And he will get the revenge kill. However, regardless, he will pop back up again. And they might even go for a potential kill here. We've got the Blink Dagger ready, Lasso as well, but they're not going to close the gap quite quickly enough. And of course, Hany does have that Lothar's Edge. That said, Marana, it looks like she's going for the. Well, I mean, it could just be a naked Yasha. Yasha by itself is always a very cost-efficient item. That could be just Yasha or another item, or it could be the full Manta style fairly shortly, and we'll see in a moment. But otherwise, Sox are just using his burst tilling skill book. Just going to deal a bit of damage here. Doesn't have to worry too much about Error yet. Error is getting closer to that armor, but he's running out of space to farm. If Fnatic are doing anything right at the moment, it's the fact they're keeping these tier twos up. These tier twos give them a bit of breathing room to farm. And if Quantic want to do something right now, it's they want to get rid of these tier twos. They bring these down. Suddenly, it's going to be so much more difficult for Fnatic to find that money to get those supports up to the level that they need to be. Mm -hmm supports and carries up to where they need to be because I mean they do need to be careful Alchemist is stunned he's sort of you know done a bit of a hybrid I really feel like they should have kept Hanny mid and really just allowed him to abuse that mid lane but as it is he's doing a sort of a hybrid build he went for two levels of greed early and then transitioned out to a fighting role has decided to pick up the extra levels in acid spray and is busy maxing them out right now and of course maxed out concoction ASAP but bottom lane this could get messy arrow goes oh. in the fight. oh no arrow's dead there is no way he lives through this there we go jumps in last solo they're actually just going to use to pick off the Rubik yeah, they thought the bank could get in for the Fiend's Grip. Didn't work. Oh! Great steal, great steal. Then they get the counter overgrowth there. They will actually manage to turn this around, possibly. Tree goes down. They've lost the Rubik already, but it looks like Trixie now taking a lot of damage. Queen of Pain, she doesn't have an ult up. They will manage to lose both the Visage, though. Queen of Pain, very low, willing to back up. No, she decides to go and gets brought down. Batrider still there. Batrider moving, and Moonlight Shadow going to cover them. But Hanny is out of mana, doesn't have any ways to bring that back up. But it's a two for two trade. However, Quantic losing the more expensive heroes. Yeah, actually, that went extremely well for Fnatic, considering the circumstance. I mean, they got hit by that arrow so hard, but they expected the Bane to get in closer for that Fiend's Grip. It didn't happen, so instead, they jumped in, and if they if Fnatic had any detection at all, they would have been completely screwed over. Fortunately for them, Fnatic wasn't ready for that Moonlight Shadow, couldn't kill anybody that went out of range of the tower, but they still got a number of pickoffs, and a lot of that has to do with the Queen of Pain blinking into this position here. Not exactly sure that decision. She got nightmared up. She was in a position to survive on through that, and instead blinks right on top of the life cellar to get right-click down in one quick swing. So, really, 
Uh, questionable decision making across the board, but you have the Quanti getting great initiation, but not enough follow through considering yeah she didn't even get the Sonic wave off. I'm dead sure. I'm pretty sure Rubik managed to get a counter steal in there. That was really good. If that was the case, I'm pretty sure he managed to steal overgrowth. That's mm -hmm, it. Yeah. Trees picked up. Uh, and picked up a medallion, that's definitely going to lend them some damage. A lot of extra, especially since these heroes, the last on the Alchemist, don't have a lot of armor. That is really going to help Queen of Pain and Mirana knock out a lot of damage against them. She also mentioned that Aaron now has an armor. That makes him a lot more lethal than before. But now the push is coming in on mid. This is where things get messy. Queen of Pain still has her ult up. That's the other thing. She didn't commit a Sonic Wave for that last fight. That really could have been quite different. And she might have actually been looking for the Sonic Wave on Arrow. However, he managed to just avoid that by bringing her down quickly enough. So we're going to have the Firefly, they're giving them vision. But it looks like Fnatic aren't too worried about that mid-town. In fact, it looks like they might just decide to counter push the tier one top. I don't know about the decision, because I don't think they're going to get it. I feel like they need to TP back and try and defend. Or maybe they're a little bit worried. Maybe they're worried they can't take this. They're just going to use the Glyph there. They're going to lose their tier two. And all they're really going to get out of it is a bit of farm for error. They're not going to get that tier one tower if Quantic decide to defend it. Yeah. Hmm, tough position to be in here, but Fnatic does have so much core potential. We were talking about it in the draft, and it continues to remain to be the case. If Trixie can find that BKB, if uh, all of, really all of Fnatic's heroes find a way to get out of Overgrowth, so they're all going to be going BKB except for Life Stealer, who of course can Rage on out. If they can get out of that Overgrowth early and Fly can keep up these baller steals, then they're actually going to be able to have a really good chance going through this because Quantic's skills are very, very high density in their involvement. If you can steal an Overgrowth or a Sonic Wave, even a Fiend's Grip is a pretty easy pickoff, you're going to be able to turn the fight around very, very quickly. So that's a that's really what has to be prioritized is Fly's positioning. Unfortunately, he's only on brown boots. He's sitting at 340 MS with no ways to jump around, but... If he can be in the right position, the right place, the right time, they should be able to make this work for them. So, yeah, oh. turtling it up for the time being. We'll see if Quanta can actually bring down towers, since they do have so much gradual siege with that healing potential. I'll be honest, I'm not really in love with Tree's item build. I really would have liked to see him just get the arcane boots, or even just skip the arcane boots, and just go straight for that mech. I feel like if he had the mech completed by now, it would have made such a difference. Because like, you've seen like two fights from the mid fight over here, the fight down here, like you see a lot of heroes on Quantic get so, so low. And they have to like, even though they're not getting killed, they have to back out. They can't mm -hmm. really just stick the boot in. And if they had that mech, I feel like it'd be a completely different story. That said, I mean, this is working out for them. I do have, I mean, you've got to keep in mind, the medallion does do a ton of extra damage, and it did allow them to take that early Roshan as well. It really did help a lot in clearing that early Rosh, but they're taking another tier two, which Fnatic, they're not defending these tier twos. I mean, sure, it is hard. I mean, it is hard for them to engage now because I should mention that Bane did pick up a gem. He's had that for the last five minutes or so, and that's a really smart play there by Quanta. Getting this early gem gives them so much map control. Having this map control is key to shutting down Fnatic's ability to farm. If they're scared to step foot outside of the base, they're going to get choked out of this match really, really quickly. Also, should mention that Soksha has picked up the full match style, so he has gone for that. And they'll add a fair, they'll add some nice damage, but obviously. It's not huge amounts, and of course, well, that said, actually, no, I'll take that back a little bit because it's not huge amounts of AoE from Fnatic. They've got, obviously, they've got cooldown, and that's Fade Bolt, that's about it for the AoE potential, so she's not really going to be losing those illusions super quick, so she can use them to help push without too much trouble. But farm-wise, I mean, we have an armor that lasts. It's got another 1,500 gold. We have another 1,300 gold on Alchemist. If they get these BKBs, suddenly Quantic is in a very, like, they have Fiend Script, sure, but they're in a much weaker position. So I really think, like Quantic, they need to keep this pressure on because they let these heroes, or they let rather, they just let uh -oh. Alchemist pick up the BKB. Oh, so it looks like bottom lane. No, that's just silent. Minions, if he look. gets telekinesis right here, it's terrible. Oh my gosh, this is going to be an easy kill for them. He has no durability. His BKB is still on the courier, and he just got dropped down very, very quickly, and that limits them extensively because Queen of Pain does not have the gold to buy back. They can try to put pressure on this tier two, but if they overstep their boundaries and Fnatic makes a good rotation, there's no way they can push down this lane. But instead, I think gonna... Fnatic is just going to go for a push themselves, try to get gold on the board for themselves. As long as they're not uh, being sieged on upon by the Tier 3s, they're wanting to bring down towers, but Trance making that harder than they would actually prefer. I'm going to say that was definitely... Like, Silent has obviously been playing brilliant most of the game, but that was definitely a little bit of a more fairly big misplay by him. The fact is, like, when you've got a team who are under siege this heavily, you've got to expect that Swears will come back to a second. There's no tiles to get burst down. He gets jumped, gets picked. And they need to be careful they don't lose Hanny as well. He should be fine though, because Lasso is on cooldown. He's got the Shadow Blade. But when you're like pushing a team back this hard, you've got to expect they're going to put a ward here. 
Mm-hmm. That, that's just a, you know, a dead obvious spot. If you're getting pushed back hard, you've lost your tier twos, this is where you stick a ward. You know, pub games, any game, that's where the wards go. So, I mean, the fact that they've got no vision up there, they haven't checked it, they haven't scouted out, haven't done any counter warding up there, she had to know that there was going to be a ward up there. And sitting here is, they can see you. There's no, there no way they're not going to see you there. So, I mean, they, they could see it thanks to that ward and just obviously burst it down so quick with a lockdown. Maybe she thought she was just a little bit more durable than that. I don't know. Yeah, but. or maybe thought they had a little bit more control with the Firefly plus Gem, which generally will guarantee you a lot of free map control. But in this case, just not working out for them. And now things are changing up a little bit. Uh, finally, a Nakes Bomb actually works out for them. Hani and Era are able to bring down the Mirana. So, actually a pretty big kill as they're continuing to just push back Quantic. If they can hold their racks, they can hold this game. And for right now, the, the kills that they're getting are acquiring them a lot of potential, but Illusion Rune, down on bottom, they're going to be able to bring down this tier 2, and without fortification, they I don't think that Fnatic really can engage in this position. I've got it, so this game, Quantic have been playing this brilliant, and I do like the fact they rotated their lanes early on. It was in there, here we go, she knows this, oh, no, wait a minute, is this bait? It's not really bait, they can see them coming in. She's just, oh, okay. just going to come here, give vision, I mean, it would have been a lot safer if she'd done this, uh, when Bame is a little bit close, but still, I mean, they go up there, just make sure they can pick off that ward. And now, this is exactly what they need to do. Make sure there's no vision. No vision for Fnatic at all. Make it really hard for them to find farm. That said, BKB is done for Alchemist. Yeah. And that is a very, very big deal. They've got that up and running now. Not only is it going to help them deal with the overgrowth, but of course, he can also just make them immune to Queen of Pain's damage. Exactly. And that is going to be... And he has almost hit his level 16, so his HP regeneration is going to be through the roof as well. He's going to be able to tank up a heck of a lot of damage and d dish out a lot of punishment in turn. So if they can just hold the line, I would say for 10 more minutes, I can guarantee this game. But for right now, these next few are going to be so crucial as Roshan's coming back up. Uh, yeah, you were questioning the medallion before mech previously, but I kind of feel if Silent had used that first Aegis more effectively than just getting a single kill on Trixie, and then being dropped down by Hani in turn, I think that they actually would have gotten a lot more benefit from that medallion rush. But in that sense, because the Silent just got dropped down and unfortunately wasted the Aegis, that does make it so that it wasn't as useful as a mechanism would have been. Either way, they take it now, they have the Aegis, they have the mechanism, and they're going to go in for the kill here. This is definitely good, but at the same time, of course, I mean, you push against a team like this, they essentially have, like, a free, like, they essentially have Aegis in their own when you're trying to push the T3s, just because you've got buybacks to consider. Do Although, we, though? Actually, said, Radiant is, yeah, really, really poor. Uh, obviously, just trying to pick up any items they can. Like, so they've been picking mm -hmm. up an Ultimate Orb for raw stats, possibly build into, like, a Scythe or something. We'll see. But for right now, that means that everybody's at least 300 gold shy of buyback. I honestly have no problem with Scythe and Lifesteal. I mean, you can never have too many Hexes. That item is so damn good. It gives him, it just gives him that extra to say. I mean, you have that against Queen of Pain, she's getting dropped so quickly. They have transitioned the gem to her, mm -hmm. so she'll be carrying that now. That said, I mean, they want to go and push this T3 in this no. time. Oh, error! Oh, no! Are they going to push in here? This could be devastating for them. There we go, Lasso comes out. They decide to go for... Fly! Picks him up and bursts him down. A very quick pick off there. I think that's a smart choice, D. Going to prevent the steal of the overgrowth, and they won't have him for a good 30 seconds. We also have the mech up and running on Trina. This is going to make pushing the last tower very, very easy for them, or much easier than it was previously. They've got the acid spray down, though. That is definitely going to sting a bit. You see there, it's putting a lot of them. That negative armor is so painful. Arrow misses. No tail. Just barely. Black Cannon, though, coming out. Going to help defend quite heavily. Give away free bird gold. No tell. Don't know what he's doing there. Definitely don't want to give away the free bird gold. So we've got Soul Assumption going up. It does a lot of damage to some. Starstorm once again. This tower is going down rapidly. The tower is about to drop. They should be able to bring this down in just a moment. BKB from Quidipay jumps in there. Living Armor as well to heal her up. Rocket Barrage does absolutely nothing. Another Soul Assumption goes off. Great chill as well. But now we've got Aaron moving in. He's low, though. Gets rooted down. He's in a lot of trouble. Can he invest? He can't find it in time. Doesn't jump in a hand. He can't taxi boy. And here comes the scream from Queen of Pain. She will knock out. She will knock out the Alchemist, and that's four down. This looks like a mid rack. She's going to go down. That said, with that said, Fnatic, I mean, it's only one rack. They may decide to play on. Yeah, I wouldn't call GG for the life of me in this situation here, but that was a huge punishment going on, and they were just trying to delay it a little bit more, a little bit more, trying to get Fly back into it, but instead, the yeah, no spell steals come on out. They just lose so many heroes left and right. The uh, initiation popping off the lasso guarantees on that, and they're actually going to call it here as the top ra tier 3 is dropping very rapidly. That's unfortunate for Fnatic. They, they did put their heart and soul into this game, but it just it didn't work out because it wasn't their playstyle. It really they were looking for 
they generally look for ways to control the map to put pressure on at each and every little angle and instead they're trying to turtle up and farm and it just doesn't really feel like a Fnatic game but either way Quantic played it amazingly to win with the Marana pickup which worked well in the try versus try and then from there they just continuously put out pressure and set up silent a uh, mistake or two here and there but as a whole a great game for Quantic and they just really really saw it to Fnatic to take them out of uh, yeah, them them out of the quarterfinals of the Aegis Cup and that means they will not be able to qualify for the Premier Cup as they haven't earned any points this time around. I'm gonna say like Quantic they outplayed the shit out of Fnatic. There's just no two ways about it. And Fnatic, I mean they made some really random last second adjustments to their lineup. The fact I think they should have stuck to their guns. They really should have stuck just gone all in in the mid with the Alchemist. They like it was obvious they did not plan to have the Alchemist solo um mm -hmm. solo the bottom lane. He started off with a bottle rush from mid item build. He got no CS initially until they rotated supports down there to help him out. I really feel like they should just put him mid, kept him mid, let Error catch up a little bit. Just because I mean, life still, he needs like an armlet, then he dishes out a ton of damage. Mm -hmm. If they had that pressure from the Alchemist, if he got his Shadow Blade a lot earlier, he could have put so much pressure on the map before the gem came out, and he would have made, especially Queen of Pain, would have been a lot more wary about getting mobile, even Batrider. They would have been a lot more wary about moving around because it could get scattered out at any moment and just burst down by an X bomb. And the other thing is, I also feel, I really question the the try. I feel like they should have gone for a try like, with way more killing potential. Like, if you're going to go for that kind of build, I feel like the life stealer was not the best option, or rather the the gyrocopter was not the best option. I feel like they should have just gone flat out, have a just a try that was built around killing, absolutely murdering your opponents, like the dual lane that they did with Wisp in the mid. It should have just been. I feel like they should have just gone for CK, Lena, Lashrak, something like that, triple stuns, mm -hmm. and just you just wipe people. You just yeah. completely shred people. And when you've got like you've got Triama, sure. But when you're like, dealing with three sets of stuns, you're going to keep them locked down for so long, they're just going nowhere. And when they lack the damage too, like opening up with a Grave Chill, the Rubik opens up with a Lift, they're completely reliant on the Rocket Barrage, and they burn that to farm creep, and then engaged off top of that. Like, that was really not a clever... There really was not a clever play there from Fnatic because all their damage was in that one hero and they put the spells on cooldown and suddenly they've got Lift, they've got Grave Chill, and then they've got nothing. Mm -hmm. So, overall, I think Quantic, smart lanes, and they really just played a lot better than Fnatic tonight and they definitely deserve that win. That said, they do not have a shot yeah. at the uh, the Premier Cup and it's going to come down to how Virtus Prime Mouse Sports play now as to whether or not Fnatic get through. Yeah, exactly that. Essentially, it's going to be down to the points of, of putting their fate in the hands of all the other teams that are contesting them for that position. It's, it's going to be pretty interesting to see in just a little bit. I definitely agree with you on a lot, of, a ton of your points there. Uh, in general, like the fact that they picked up the Alchemist and didn't really get much farm on them, I, I think Hani even went three points in Gribble's Greed really early on instead of Acid Spray. I mean, it just mm. showed this different focus as far as timing that uh, Quantic was able to exploit. A lot of it hinged on Silent doing extremely well, but fortunately for them, he did. Getting that triple kill so early on, it just set it up, so the, I think that Fnatic, because they didn't have any ward vision down on bottom when that happened, they kind of handed a few kills away not knowing the circumstances, and uh, from there, yeah, that turnaround aspect just allowed Silent to kind of steamroll, and they didn't really have an answer for it. So, Quantic take it away, they will advance on forward, and the next matchup is going to be a really, really good one. We're going to be seeing Mouseports versus Alliance, and...